everyone and welcome to another Getting Stuff Painted, my bi-weekly update, give or take, on the various miniatures I've been painting for the various games we cover here on the channel. Apologies for this taking the place of a normal video being posted this week, rather than an extra video on a Thursday. I got my COVID booster and it's taken a little bit out of me, so I'm, I'm, I'm taking a little bit of a rest, just doing a short video for today. Hopefully I have something proper for uh, Friday, at least. But, for now, got a lot of stuff to talk about. There's a massive variety, including just a, a random assortment at the end there. Big chunk of Marvel Crisis Protocol to start with, then a fair chunk of the Batman miniature game, and then it just becomes an eclectic mix of nonsense. There's some Wasteland Warfare, there's some Don't Look Back, and some Star Wars Legion. So we'll start from the left, work our way right as always, talk a little bit about how they've been painted. So let's start with the big man himself, even though it's kind of in the opposite order of what I painted them in, because I did Gambit and Rogue first. The Juggernaut, who is large enough that Contrast struggles for sure, and I also struggle just to get the colour scheme right. The official paint job has it very kind of Auburn in colour. Uh, that's not my memory of how the Juggernaut looked. This is more in my memory of how he looked, even though I think he was all one colour in the, the 90s cartoon. But either way, I opted to instead to kind of aim for that. So I used Snakebite Leather for the majority of his armour, Gulman Flesh for basically every skin tone we're going to talk about today, and Flesh Terror Red for this chest area and his booties and Basilicanum Grey for the base. It streaked a bit too much, uh, I, I might go over it at some point. Oh yeah, sorry, I also used Wildwood for the inlining and then um, Black Templar because he has black lines there as well. And that's just Grey Seer which he was based in for his teeth, which is hopefully in focus going to come a bit closer, a little bit closer. So yeah, it looks okay in some ways. I actually think it looks better from the back because the muscle lines have, have had it just pull enough that it looks pretty decent. Side on kind of looks okay as well, but as when you get to the front, I don't think it, it turned out that great. And the traffic lights he could be holding, I opted to put on the base just as extra as a bit of flavour. To look like he's just stomping through everything. I like the Juggernaut. I'm looking forward to seeing how he performs on the table. I'm not too happy with the paint job though, and I did not have any colour that would replicate the official paint job. So we're actually starting with the two I'm least happy with how they turned out. So we'll cover Magic next. Uh, as far as I'm aware, in the official comic book she's meant to have like a yellow glow, but I'll take any excuse not to use yellow paints. So I copied the official paint job of blue. Mixture of Ultramarines blue, Aethermatic blue and Talisar blue. Same way I did the water for like crystal etc. Now the pose is fun, like side on it looks pretty cool. From the front, not so much, when her armour is so boring looking it's just all black. Well, uh, costume clearly designed by a man. <laughs> and she's got kind of like metal bits which is just lead belcher silver so not not a great assembly either like trying to assemble i don't know i think that's not in focus trying to get the this hand on with the gauntlet was just an absolute pain nothing to do with there being no assembly instructions it's just finicky and those all are always annoying but the sword part i'm okay with a little bit of black templar as well and hopefully again We'll get to see how she performs on the next battle report with her brother, who I guess we'll cover next, Colossus. He's already been in one battle report because I really like Colossus, so I wanted him ready to go with Rogue and Gambit. So, Lead Belcher Silver again for his skin with non oil over the top. I think that's in focus. Ultramarine's blue for the Sentinel hand he's holding, Yand and Yellow for the yellow parts, and Blood Angel's red for the red parts. Non oil over those as well. My dog is whining for attention. I have a collection of toys underneath my feet. <laughs> Do you need to wait though until I've talked through these? But yeah, Colossus, great pose. The only problem with the pose is that sentinel hand he's holding over his head, it casts a lot of shadow on him. So if you're on the table kind of looking down, all you're seeing is the hand, which is a little sucky. And also his hand is modeled onto the hand as I showed in the unboxing. So yes, you could make him hold something else, but it's also gonna have to be obscuring. Otherwise, it's going to be really obvious that he's missing a hand. So, it's a shame. It's a fun pose if seen from the front. From the table, though, you're going to be like that constantly or like that. So, you just you can't see him in all his glory. But, oh well. So, you may have noticed in the first battle report that it had Gambit, Rogue, and Colossus. At the end of the video, Gambit's staff was bent. And I didn't notice while filming. I noticed afterwards and I don't know how it happened. I think a model gently brushed it like brushed down on the, the staff like this and it actually is thin enough that it bent. I managed to kind of caress it back so it's okay now I think. But yeah it's very like if you check the very end of the video when I'm doing the wrap up 
uh, it's very clearly bent, uh, which, is, which is not good because it did not get hit badly by anything, it was just a little tap. I think uh, another mentor got partially put down on him. Uh, but either way, this is Fopus Pink for his kinetic charge, same with the middle part of his armour, and Space Wolves grey slash blue for his clothing. Now originally I did his coat in snake bite leather like I did Juggernaut's armour, but I hated how it looked. It just, it, his cape is too flat, so I went over, I can't tell if that's in focus or not. It could just be my eyes because of the booster, honestly, I'm not 100% sure. Little out of it this morning. But yeah, I hated how it looked, so I went over it with Mornfine Brown, just a normal Citadel paint. And then a little bit of Aggressor Shade to cast shadows in the recesses. So that is not in contrast. It got closer to the colour of the official paint job as well. I, I could totally see you doing something similar for Juggernaut's armour, but I'm not sure if it would look right. It, because in some in some iterations it's very brown looking armour, in others it's very orange for Juggernaut's, I don't know. And again that's Lead Belcher Silver for his his boots with non oil over the top. Rogue turned out okay for having a lot of Yand and Yellow used in the in the fire and the flames that she's bursting out of in her armour of course. Snake bite leather for her jacket which has enough creases that it looks okay and warp lightning green for the rest of her costume. Smoke is done or the fire and whatnot is done in the same way I did for like War Machine, um, the Hulkbuster, Sam Wilson, Captain America. It's the same basic mix of Yand and Yellow, Griffhound, Orange and Black Templar for like the, the charred edges and the same orange for her hair as well. Now I, I deliberately slightly misplaced the thing she's punching because I think it looks better than the official placement. There's, there's room to move and it's just Lead Belcher Silver on those as well. Okay, I guess, with how she turned out. I, I don't like her face sculpt, I will say that. I don't like how it looks. It's not just my bad paint job, I think she looks puffy without being too insulting, which is not how I picture Rogue. So, you know, it's a personal preference maybe, it just it looks a little weird to me in terms of face sculpts, although we'll talk more about that in a second. So again, this is the opposite order to being uh, in the order I painted, but I want to talk about these first. So I unboxed the Mr. Freeze stuff that was part of the Black Friday releases at the end of the year, and I got the reinforcements box, which is two models that are also in the crew box, meaning that they're spare, because you can bring up to three, because they're minions. And they were perfect to test some colour scheme ideas to see how close I could get to the official paint job, because worst case scenario, they turn out bad. There's two more of them in the crew box, and they need to look slightly different anyway, so I can tell them apart. So I'm happy with how this turned out, it's, it, is, it is going to be the scheme that I use for the rest of the Mr. Freeze stuff. So I'll talk about the colours used for both because there's the same colours across both. Main colour, Talisar blue for the, the cloak, Basilicanum grey for the ruffles and the, the fluff around the hood. And the, the armour bits, I'm not 100% happy with the armour bits but it's as close as I can get to the, the paint job. And the way I did that was Lead Belger Silver, Ultramarines blue on top and then some highlighting with Calgar blue. Just a, a, my best attempt at just doing a little bit of highlighting, not dry brushing, highlighting, which I'm not good at, for the record. And I did similar for the ice, uh, grey sear base, and then Aethermatic blue over it. A little bit of Talisar blue while it's wet, mix it in, and then a little bit of edge highlighting with grey sear again, just to bring up some of the, the, the highest edges. Whether or not it worked, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with how close it got to the official paint job. This is actually the first one I painted of the two, so this one was pure experimental. Oh, and the the trim on the jackets as well was Calgar blue, but once you put the the, the not the nylon oil, the um, the aggressor shade on, it kind of mixed the colours, so you can't really even tell that they're different, honestly. So that's not a really a necessary step. But yeah, she's got hands for guns. No, she's got guns for hands. There we go. That order. And it looks enough like weird ice, because I don't want to look like normal ice, because it is artificially created by like freeze weapons. So I'm okay with them. Uh, and going forwards again, yeah, I'm, I'm probably going to stick with that for the entire crew. So next we have the Batman miniatures I was waiting for for a while. And we'll start with the one that I was alluding to earlier. Uh, the new Black Canary, Black Canary Rebirth, who also, I feel, has a very unfortunate face sculpt that is not kind to... Dana Lance, Dana Lance, whatever her name is. Uh, barring my bad paint job, it is just not a flattering sculpt. 
let's see, nor is it a flattering pose in general or a costume, but that's not their fault. But pretty much the same colours I've been talking about. Um, a Krellin green for her jacket is the only standout one. Gulvin flesh, yand and yellow, and the textured base they provided, which is actually really nicely textured, is just warp lightning green with high grab surf shade over the top. Talisar blue for the war, and snake bite leather for the, ro uh, the log. And I use the same colours for Green Arrow Rebirth, who I'm looking forward to using on the table as well. Only difference is the Warp Lightning also had a dry brushing of. Oh, my dog might bark at people going past the window. Uh, dry brushing. Oh, no, she didn't. The dry brushing of. Ooh. Nurgling Green? I always forget the name of it. Nurgling Green, I think. The, the brighter green standard paint that Zero does. It works well as a dry brushing over Warp Lightning. That's basically it, because he's mostly green. The silver parts, like the arrow, the bow, and his quiver, did it in Lead Vulture Silver and then used Baotan Green Wash over the top to also tint it that little bit green, maybe it look like it's reflecting the armour a little bit. And the base, exactly the same as Black Canaries. So next is Punchline, the last of the Batman miniatures this time. Now, she has a lot of non-contrast work on her, because I hate Shilish Purple as a contrast paint. So I used, oh, I used the Gene Stealer, the Gene Stealer Citadel paint for her purple parts. I used Black Templar for her corset and her her stockings, whatever those are, with a dry brushing of the Fang, which is another normal Citadel paint over the top. I also used that to highlight her hair part because she has like a different colored part of her hair uh, in her parting on the front. And let's see, I think that's about it. A little bit of highlighting with Lead Butcher Silver, some normal red Citadel paint and some Nurgling Green as well, just to try and get it as close as possible to the official paint job. Quite happy with how this one turned out, considering I thought it would be next to impossible to get even remotely close with how detailed she is for how small she is. You know, the, the, the thin frame, etc. Uh, Blood Angel Red for the snapping, exploding teeth on her base and Snake Bite Leather for the mallet as well. Probably not her mallet, it's probably Harley's mallet. Either way, that's it for the Batman stuff. Now we move on to the eclectic mix. So Wasteland Warfare, I started painting up this three suicider box that I um, showed off. And this is a 2000, yeah, it's a 2017 box. And that's right when it feels like the resin is at its worst for just contrast paint not taking to it, no matter how much you wash it. And oh boy, did this miniature frustrate me to the point where there's still probably a bunch of white gaps you can see in the base because no matter how much I tried to like reapply base coats, reapply contrast, it kept running. So I just got fed up. Also, he's a different shade of green. I used Militarm Green contrast paint. It just wasn't working. So I had no choice but to use Castellan Green, I think it's called. It's a, it's a similar Citadel paint, but on top of the Militarm, it's made him a different skin tone to the other orcs. orcs. Super mutants, I mean. So it's annoying me because they don't match, but I'll, I'll have to do this for all three now. But I'm going to pull off doing the other two because this was just an exercise in absolute frustration. I don't know why it is that way. The other two, I've put them in the wash twice now to desperately try and make them not as frustrating when I get around to painting them. But yeah, this was just... It was stuff from this year, like the 2017 range releases, that originally made me stop playing Wasteland Warfare because I just could not paint them with contrast paint and even normal paints were running. And it's not like it's pulling elsewhere, it's very, very strange. I was watching it very closely, like I'd have it like this for instance, so the paint would catch in this corner down here, let's say, which you can hopefully just about see. I'd do a little dollop and I'd watch it and it would, it would be as if it evaporates. Not drain elsewhere, just evaporates. I have no explanation for how it happens because it's not pulling elsewhere. It's literally just kind of like separating and vanishing. It's the strangest thing. In fact, I can see it, like, in between his legs there, the back of the, whatever this is, the traffic light that he's sitting on, there's a huge gap that looks like I've missed it unpainted. I applied so much lead belcher to that, and lead belcher isn't a contrast paint. It's a normal technical paint. And it just kept running, and it still is, a, is just not pulled. Very frustrating, very frustrating. <laughs> anyway, I had to paint up my killer for Don't Look Back first. And I am a fan of the Halloween movies, as bad as most of them are. First one is a masterpiece though. So I had to go with making him look like Michael Myers, although over Christmas I've been watching the Friday the 13th movies 
Um, you can definitely do a Jason from the second one with the multi parts you get given. You could sort of do a like it does come with a hockey mask. You could sort of do like the standard version of him if you do it this, or maybe like a part five version, depending on what you want. But I went for Michael Myers, the standard like mechanic jump suit, the Shatner mask, and the bloodied blade. Pardon me. So to play, don't look back. You just need to paint up four of the six survivors uh, that come in the box. I'm in the process of painting up the one adult you get, and then I'm going to pick three of the teens out of the rest out of the five get those painted up and we'll hopefully give the game a trial run sometime in January is my hope um, towards the end maybe depending on how Shadow the Bat does and how much I feel like keep on playing that because obviously that's unpainted and that bothers me as well as other people we'll see we, we can honestly give it a go oh, and on the subject of uh, UK stockists as it turns out some UK stockists are starting to get import orders on Don't Look Back Modifius has them listed but they're all out of stock Modifius does Wasteland Warfare, so I'm keeping a close eye on that because if, it's, if it becomes easier to get in the UK and people like it, that is, uh, when it goes live, once I play it, um, it will be easier to get in theory and that'd be good. So to finish on, we have, in memory of Christopher Lee, Count Doku for Star Wars Legion and I got him just because I, I like him and I have fun painting lightsaber miniatures just because it lets me deal with harsh reflections which probably don't make much sense really because it's not like he's wearing a reflective substance, he's wearing a cloth but I still like doing it. Black Templar, a lot of Blood Angels Red first with a dry brushing of the normal non-contrast red on top as well to give that reflective glow. Filament Flesh, uh, that's just non-oil over standard grey sear for his beard and moustache. His cloak was... it looks like snake bite leather to me, I, sorry I painted this a while back, <laughs> just haven't had a chance to talk about it. Snake bite leather and uh, aggressor shade over the top, and again the, the, the same technical paint I use for all the, the Legion miniatures to make it look like they're in a desert. But yeah, I'm happy with how the glow came on that one. He's got a little bit of a curved saber, which I think is, is, is canonical, I don't quite remember. But yeah, pretty neat looking miniature. Probably no hope of seeing Star Wars Legion anytime soon, but I am still just enjoying painting the miniatures from it, the, the characters and, and whatnot, and the stormtroopers, so many stormtroopers. One day I might start painting the, the Rebel Alliance, one day, one day. But anyway, that is going to do it, so over the Christmas season, if you've got any miniatures and you've started painting them, by all means show me on Twitter, at GamerEND, it's linked below the video. And I don't mind if it's a game I don't play, I just like seeing painted miniatures, it helps inspire me to paint my own. And boy oh boy is there a lot of them, like just sitting, I've still got the Mr. Freeze crew box sitting next to me right over here. Like that's like however many miniatures on its own, two, four, six, seven, seven, eight plus Mr. Freeze himself. So next time we will be seeing a lot more of Mr. Freeze's stuff. I hope to get started on the man himself so that I have, that like, I might be able to do a bare bones crew. As long as I have him as the, the leader we can use his objective deck, try it out. Uh, there will be more Don't Look Back for sure, because I'm part way through painting Ranger Sandy, is her name. And, oh, I don't know if I'm going to, I am not. I don't know if I'm going to tackle those other two suiciders yet. I might need to take a break from that. Depending on what people vote for for the next Wasteland Warfare, something else will have to take priority for being painted anyway. And I think it's a newer sculpt, thank, thank goodness, so it won't have the, the running problem as bad. But, yeah, a fair haul over the Christmas. Again, apologies that there's no normal video on a Wednesday but need to take a couple of days off to, to recover from the booster shot. Yeah, just, just a little fatigued and tired and, and sore. But anyway, hopefully it'll be a proper video on Friday. Thank you very much for watching. Hope it inspired you to get some of your stuff painted. And if you have any questions, comments, etc., feel free to put them in the, the section below. Until next time, ta for now.